What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new portable power station. This is the All Powers R1500. Taking a look at the specs, this has a 1152 watt hour LifePo4 battery, a 1800 watt power handling with a peak of 3000 watts, a 650 watt charging input, UPS function with a 15 millisecond switch over time, and weighs only 36.8 pounds. Taking a look inside the box, you have your warranty information and user manual inside this here. Then you have a nice carrying case where you can put all your cables. And inside this bag, you get your power cable, which I'm always happy to see. So you don't have any power brick to charge this. You just plug it in with one of these directly to the power station. And then you also get your solar charging cables as well. So taking a look at the power station itself, this is definitely one of the nicer ones out there. I own quite a few power stations at this point, and a lot of them look like ugly, boring, generic battery boxes. I mean, not that it matters in the end, but if you're going to give me a nice looking power station, I'm going to take it. And like I said, this is definitely one of the better looking ones out there. I do have quite a few power stations from All Powers already. Very good brand. I have, I think, about four power stations from All Powers. All have been performing very good without any issues. The other one... The most recent one that I have besides this one is the R2500, and this is basically the little brother to that one. I had that one for about six months now, haven't had any issues, so I suspect this one is going to work just as well. As I said earlier, this is only 36.8 pounds, which for me is a very good weight for a power station. You might say that's a little heavy, but in my opinion, I have some power stations that go up to 80 pounds, and then there's power stations that go as low as like 15 pounds. I think this is like the perfect medium. Because when you go with a power station too small, yes, it's portable, but it's really limited on what you can do. You don't have that much of a wattage output. You usually don't have that much battery capacity. And then when you go on the much higher end, yes, you have more wattage, more battery capacity. But at that point, it becomes a very large box. And like I said, they go up to 70, 80 pounds. So in my opinion, this one is like the perfect medium. It's not too big, but it's also not too small. It's the perfect size that it's still portable. It's still pretty lightweight and it also has a good enough power output and capacity to use in a wide variety of different ways as well. I know a lot of things it's like, oh, buy the best one you can buy, get whatever you can afford. Don't do that. Really think about what you need out of a power station and the weight and the size and how you're going to use it and go based off that. All right. So taking a look at the ports up here, you have two USB-A, which are 18 watts each. Right down here, you have two USB-C ports. They're both 100 watt, which is always good to see. A lot of times you'll get one 100 watt and the other one will be 60 or 30 watts. So it's good to always get two 100 watts like this. One thing I really like about this power station is how all of these ports are covered. I don't know why they left this one open. I mean, they covered all of these. They might as well have covered this one as well. So I'm not really sure what that's about, but it's good to see at least all of these are covered as well. I have quite a few power stations where they don't have any covers. And for me, that's just a hazard uh, with outlets. Kids can stick stuff in them. Hairs can get in there. And power stations like this just sit around a lot. Well, at least mine do. They just kind of sit there and I use them every now and then. So they're bound to collect dust and whatnot. But with this, that's going to keep it covered. So right down here, you have four AC outlets. And up here, you have your DC output, which goes up to 12 volts and 10 amps. Coming around this side, you have two connectors here, which are for your expansion batteries. So you can have this unit, and then they also sell expansion batteries that stack up on top. And you can have two additional batteries with this as well. And then coming over here, you have all of your inputs. You have your AC input, your AC overload protector, and then you have your solar input as well. And then last but not least, coming up top, you have not one, but two wireless chargers. And these are also fast wireless chargers as well with an output of 15 watts each. So definitely a nice little bonus to have that on top of a power station. Going back to what I said, this makes it a very uh, well-rounded power station. You go ahead and do whatever you got to do. Power your outdoor speakers, your camping materials, whatever you want to plug into this up to 1800 watts. And then while all of that is running, you just slap your phone up on top. Well, two phones and then have those charging as well. So this power station does have app connectivity as well. And the cool thing about it is you get the option of connecting through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So if you're in front of the power station and you don't have internet access, the best way to connect might be Bluetooth. And that's going to be a direct connection from your phone to the power station. This is going to let you read the input wattage, output wattage, overall percentage, and a few other things. But if you're halfway around the world, maybe you're on vacation, whatever it may be, 
You can also log in through Wi-Fi wirelessly and still check on the same information from across the world as well. So, so nice to have that option there, not something I've seen with other power stations before. So clicking on the power station in the app, you have a few different things here. Right up top, you have your battery percentage left. And depending on what's happening, it'll also calculate how long that's gonna last as well. So for example, if we plugged in something 800 watts, it might say it's gonna last with this item for three hours, something like that. So nice to have that as well, especially in the app, maybe the power station is charging or maybe you're charging something with the power station. So you can just walk away and then open up the app and check on it from here instead of having to come back directly uh, wherever the power station is at. Right below that, you have your uh, input wattage, output wattage. Uh, here, this is basically like pushing these buttons up here on the power station. You could turn on and off the AC or DC. Uh, you have 50 hertz or 60 hertz. And then coming up top right here, you have a few different settings. Right here, you have work mode, and this is how fast the power station is going to charge or slow, depending how you want to do it. Uh, fast mode was 1500 watts. Uh, standard mode, you get about 1000 watts, maybe about 1100 watts. And then mute mode was between about four and 500 watts. This power station has a maximum charging of 1500 watts. And on fast mode, I was able to get about 1510 watts at the most. So uh, does the rate of charging speed plus a little more as well. And then right down here, you have eco mode. This is basically a auto shut off. So right here, you have the shutdown time. You go anywhere from one to six hours. So again, maybe you're charging something or maybe you're charging the power station. You want to shut off at a certain time. You don't have to be in front of it right here. It'll automatically shut off for you. And then right down here, you have firmware upgrade. And that about wraps up everything in the app. Overall, nice and clean app. Very easy to use and navigate as well. All right, so I drained this power station from 100% to zero using about a 900 watt load. And it put out a total of 928 watt hours. Doing the math, that gives this unit a usable capacity of 80%. Most power stations of this size put out about 80 to 85% on average. So this is right there on par with most other units. Despite the AC inverter shutting off, it did say there was 5% left. So it looks like it has a safety feature that does not let you run it all the way down to zero. One other thing I like about this power station is how quiet the fans are. I had this charging another power station earlier that was drawing about 1700 watts, which is near the maximum load that this can handle. But this can do uh, 1800 watts max. Well, beside the peak, but continuous 1800 watts and the most you want to run this on. And even at the highest setting, with the fans going as loud as they're going to go, the, the fastest they're going to go, it was still very quiet. You could hear audible wind noise, but that was it. There was no noise from the actual fans themselves. This is, to me, a very, very big plus because I have a few other power stations where, yes, the fans ramp up, but they also have a very noticeable whine to them. So the entire time, along with the wind, you hear like a noise with it. And it just gets very obnoxious and you don't want to have that anywhere near you because it's just a big distraction and it attracts a lot of attention to itself. But with this one, very, very silent. It really just sounds like a house fan set on high. So you could have this right at the side of you running at high wattage and it's really not going to be all that noticeable and not going to draw much attention to itself. So as I said earlier, this has a power handling of 1800 watts and a peak of 3000 watts. Honestly, that's a very good wattage to me. Most people are not going to need much more than that. Most household things are going to be below that. The only things that are going to get close to that 1800 watts might be something like a, a blender or a toaster. A lot of those electric appliances might get close to that 1500 watt range, but for most part, they're going to be well under 1800 watts. A uh, regular household fridge is maybe seven, 800 watts, and that's when it's running at peak. But when it cycles down, they can go as low as 100 watts, even less than that. I have a mini fridge right back here, which... At peak wattage, it's about 600 watts. And then once it reaches temp, it goes down to about five or 10 watts. So like I said, this, this uh, wattage is gonna handle most household things, no problem at all. Even outdoor things, uh, electric cooking things, speakers, lights, this is gonna be able to handle quite a few different things. I have the All Powers R2500 model, and that one can do the rated power plus about 100 to 150 watts more without any issues. I have that same experience with all the rest of the All Powers uh, power stations that I have. Honestly, they all do the rated power plus a little more. So I have no doubt this one's gonna be able to handle that as well. So let's go ahead and try it out real quick. So right here we have a heat gun. I think this draws somewhere about a thousand watts. Yeah, so when it first turns on, about 1,000 watts, and then it scales down. Now it's about 950, about there. 
Uh, I don't have anything other than this right here at my filming area to test out wattages, but let's go ahead and try out a phone. Up top, we have the wireless charger. So again, you can charge two phones at once. These are 15 watt chargers and my phone right now is reading uh, fast wireless charging and that's pulling 12, 13 watts. They're 15 watt chargers. So with the inverter differences, it'll probably pull about 20 watts at the most. So you can charge two phones that'll put about 40 watts. You can put in a fridge, 800 watts, uh, TV, maybe another 500 watts. So you're going to be able to do quite a few things with this all at once. And it should be able to keep up with that without any issues. Last but not least, I also have their all powers 400 watt portable solar panel. And this is a huge and heavy panel. Not only is it huge, but it's also very heavy at almost 48 pounds just for the panel. It does feel nice and sturdy, so in the end, I really don't mind the extra weight. Size aside, this is definitely my favorite panel to use as it really charges up my power stations extremely fast all in its own. On a sunny day, I was able to get 329 watts of charging from it. I didn't adjust the panel to the perfect angle, but if all things were ideal, I'm sure it would have had no problem putting out about 350 watts. So just a quick update, I actually picked up a second 400 watt panel. So now I have two 400 watt panels for a total of 800 watts. I also picked up some adapters and extension cables so I can link them together. Right now it's winter time. I'm not going to get very good sun performance. So it's not really worth even taking them out and hooking them up. But come spring and summertime, I definitely look forward to seeing what kind of performance I can get out of the two of them combined. I'm hoping I can get somewhere around upper 600s. I'm not entirely sure, but... Once I get those linked up together, I'll update you guys in the comments on what I got out of the two 400 watt panels combined. Overall, this is definitely a great power station. Not only does it have a good capacity and power handling, but it also comes at a very good price as well. So if you happen to be looking for a medium sized power station, I would highly recommend this one here, which again is the R1500 from All Powers. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, you know, see you all next time.